Hi everyone, Rally here, and today I wanted to make a video about Garchomp. Garchomp has seen a huge surge in usage compared to previous seasons with the same rule sets. And it is interesting because Garchomp, similar to Rapierior that we have talked about in the previous episode, is able to conditionally check Cinderace and Zapdos. But what it lacks in being able to consistently check them, as opposed to being a conditional check, uh, it makes up for it because it is such a fearsome attacker that has great matchup spreads against the rest of the meta, in addition to checking the Zapdos and the Cinderace and other Pokemon. So here is its one of its most popular sets, Sword Stance. We have a lot of spl slashes with its item choice. That is because Garchomp is so versatile in terms of its item choice. It really only needs Earthquake and its Dragon Stab coverage, Scale Shot. Scale Shot makes the most sense on a Sword Stand set because it is means that Garchomp is able to boost its speed in addition to its attack. Outrage is not a bad option. Uh, as it's Dragon Stab though, it has significantly more base power uh, from the get-go. And Fire Fang is its most common coverage option uh, because it is able to hit Ferrothorn. It also hits Celesteela and Skarmory, but some of them, those are uh, tough matchups for Garchomp regardless of its coverage choice. But you can also use something like Rock Tomb, or Stone Edge, or even Rock Slide. Uh, many rock, rock move options there, and that's going to let you hit Zapdos a lot harder. Assault Vest of Garchomp is also a common set, just because how dominant Zapdos is in the current metagame. Of course, Assault Vest means no sword stance, so you could use two uh, coverage moves with Fire Fang and a rock move like Stone Edge, but also well, a decently common choice is Brick Break, which lets you go for Max Knuckle, lets you break screens, which is which can be pretty nice. And yeah, so you're going to be using four attacks with uh, a Sulfa Garchomp. Of course, these are not the only options Garchomp could use. You could use some Stealth Rock set. In fact, you could take the Sword Dance set just take out Sword Stance and just put Stealth Rock, and that's gonna be usually gonna be a perfectly fine set. Or you could use a item like Choice Scarf or Choice Band on instead of the Assault Fest, and that is also gonna be fine sets. So I think this team is pretty important to talk about as a big factor in Garchomp, seeing such high usage in the current metagame right now. Uh, Garchomp actually pairs really well with Porygon and Toxapex, a uh, defensive core, because Garchomp is able to 1v1 a lot of uh, attackers that could potentially threaten the core, such as Zen Headbutt, uh, Cinderace, for example, or something like, even, even something like Urshifu. Like, Garchomp has the natural bulk to come out on, 1v, uh, on top of uh, that 1v1 matchup. Unless they have Ice Punch, of course. Uh, Ice Punch is becoming pretty popular just to target Garchomp, actually. And the thing with Garchomp that sets it apart from something like Rhyperior is that it is fast. It has It's a fast Pokemon that has a lot of offensive pressure. So it's really difficult. On top of that, it's really difficult to switch into the, its stab combination. So if you are put in a, you're using an offensive team, you got a bad matchup, then it's really hard to get out of it without losing a Pokemon. And in fact, this team, uh, this core is so good that it has uh, resulted in a surge of similar looking teams using similar cores with the Urshifu, Zapdos, Toxapex, Porygon to Garchomp. And it is a pain because uh, so many of these Pokemon can use different items, different sets. You could use so many different uh, items on Garchomp alone. You could be Sash and Urshifu, you could be Scarf, you could be Banded, you could be Life Orb and Zapdos, you could be Scarf, you could be Defensive. There's a lot of options and it, it is 
it works so well because each of these Pokemon are so good in a vacuum. They are good without support. And on top of that, they synergize super well with each other. Urshifu and Zapdos are uh, really good combo for their ability to keep momentum, uh, offensive momentum. Po Toxapex and Porygon 2, really good at just being a solid defensive backbone. And in fact, I've heard several players say this might be the solution to Series 7 slash Series 9. And I'm not so sure that I would say that this solves the current metagame, but it is really good. It's definitely something that uh, central is highly centralizing. Uh, and if you are trying to win, you should know this. Uh, you should see what's coming. So yeah, let's go to the first game. I am using the Aegislash version, the first version of the team that the block guy used. And I am against pretty standard looking offensive team with Zapdos, Cinderace, Mimikyu. I think I've actually seen this team, but not in Series 7. It might have been in Series 6. Uh, Garch, uh, Urshifu is pretty solid uh, in terms of being... Has a pretty solid matchup all around. I think Porygon 2 switches into a lot of things. And Garchomp is going to be my last. Uh, instead of Toxapex, just because I want to bring Garchomp to this matchup. I'm not necessarily so sure that it is the best bring, but uh, it, this is the Garchomp is going to be made sure that I am going to have a way to check Cinderace without banking on its moveset. Because if it's a Zen Headbutt Cinderace, uh, then which is possible because they have the Psychic Terrain uh, with the NDD, then I would just lose on the spot with the Toxapex be as my main check so so yeah so let's get into the game so yeah let's see what my opponent leads with he leads with the Excadrill and I lead with the water Urshifu and this is perfect uh, I am going to be outspeeding and going for a one hit KO with the surging strikes and if it's Sash it doesn't matter, I'm going to be able to hit straight through it. If it's Scarf, Earthquake is not going to be doing enough to this uh, Urshifu, even with a crit. So he needs to switch into it, and but he has very little switch-ins. So I'm a bit curious what he is going to do. Uh, even the Azumarill is going to take a ton from this Bandit Surgeon Strikes. And I have the potential to, to just follow it up with a max... Uh, lightning but none of that happens he just brings it, uh, lets the Excadrill go which is a smart play especially if he's trying to check it offensively with uh, check my Urshifu offensively with the Cinderace or the Zapdos then it makes a lot of sense to just bring this in now because my he, he, this could be pretty threatening, uh, depending on what I have, so. Yeah, he brings out Mimikyu, which lets me, it suggests to me that he didn't have any certain strike switch in the first place, so. If he had a defensive Zapdos or something like that, then that could potentially switch in. Uh, well, it's not going to have a fun time switching into my Bandit Surgeon Strikes, but... Uh, he could get the Paralysis, got, could get the Rocky Helmet, and everything. And on top of that, most uh, Urshifu Water aren't banded, even though the regular, uh, the, the original team is banded. Uh, a lot of Urshifu, uh, or Sash, or even Scarf. So Zapdos can actually switch in pretty comfortably to those type of Urshifu. So, but he doesn't even try, so... My guess is he doesn't have a Zapdos, uh, especially because he brought in Mimikyu. He didn't even try to revenge with the Zapdos. So, and he has to Dynamax to stay alive. As, as you saw, it did uh, my Surging Strikes uh, through the after the Disguise, it did about half to his uh, Mimikyu. So, it actually 
uh, he actually needed to use his Dynamax there to just to stay alive. But that means that I have broken its disguise and I left a lot of heavy damage on this Mimikyu, which leaves it in range of my Max Quake. Uh, I am confident that this Max Quake is going to KO because he has revealed Life Orb. Life Orb Mimikyu tend to not be defensively invested much at all, uh, as opposed to Keyberry. Uh, if he had revealed Keyberry, I would be more wary about going into Garchomp. Uh, not necessarily, not even just because. Ah, uh, whatever. It's it. I'm just gonna be able to go for the Max Quake, and that should be KOing the Mimikyu. And my opponent has to deal with two turns of Dynamax Guard Jump. That is not fun. Uh, Guard Jump has really good coverage, and I could even go for the Max Knuckles if I were to be walled by something. But I don't really see uh, this uh, Guard Jump getting walled unless he has a defensive uh, uh, Zapdos, physically defensive Zapdos. But then, if it's a physically defensive Zapdos, he shouldn't really have a good way to hit me. So yeah, he brings in the NDD mail. So this is basically much over. Uh, it doesn't have the uh, bolt to survive a max quake. And it doesn't have the damage to break through a salt vest guard jump. So this should be pretty much GG. He goes for the expanding force. It's a pretty strong move, but not enough to take out Garchomp, and it goes down, so good game. Uh, Garchomp showing why it's so good uh, in the first game. And my second opponent has a pretty interesting team. Uh, well, he has five really standard Pokemon and one interesting Pokemon. And Cup Raja. And in fact, I, even though he has a bunch of standard Pokemon, it is all physical. And well, Dragonite could be special. And uh, none of them really have fun time against Toxapex. So this is a very easy Toxapex spring. And in fact, I'm gonna, just going to lead with the Zapdos to see uh, what on earth he had actually has to pressure the Toxapex. Because odds are he is going to be using whatever he has to pressure Toxapex to lead. And that means that uh, it's not going to have a fun time against Zapdos because he doesn't have a Volt Switch uh, immunity either. So, And if Zapdos is put in a bad, bad matchup, I have the Scarf Volt Switch to just kind of do some decent chip damage and get out and bring Toxapex in. And that's going to be able to basically sponge just about any damage. Uh, my opponent leads Urshifu of Water. So there's a lot of different things that Urshifu of Water can do. Uh, none of them involves uh, switch surviving a uh, raw volt switch unless it is some Assault Vest Urshifu. And if it, if it is Ursh Assault Vest Urshifu then, or Sash, then it's they're not going to be able to have the damage to uh, actually pressure the tox effects. So I go for the Volt Switch and he just straight up dies. Guessing that was like a Scarf, I guess. But yeah, he didn't really have a good uh, switch out into Volt Switch. So I don't think it was a bad play. I, I think it's just like not a very well thought out team, I guess. But yeah, so he leads, uh, brings out the Pheromosa, which does beat Garchomp 1v1, but also gives me a free switch out into Toxapex. So yeah, so I brought in Garchomp because I wanted to exude as much offensive pressure as possible. I didn't want to give him obvious setup opportunities or anything like that. If he has a, a, a substitute Dragonite, that, that could be... That could get potentially hairy, uh, depending on what he has. Um, but this leading Garchomp made it so that uh, I can actually get Garchomp into action, first of all. Because, I mean, there's also a pretty good chance that Garchomp is 
pretty useless here. I just brought it because I definitely just wanted to uh, showcase Garchomp here. And Tox effects seems like it just kind of wins, uh, to be perfectly honest. So Feromosa U-turns out, uh, and that means it doesn't get toxic or burned, but that means Dragonite gets toxic. So because Tox effects seems to have such an amazing matchup, uh, as I said, like at the beginning, Dragonite might be special and i think that's what it what's happening here i think this might be a special dragonite so that's why i go into my guard chomp here uh because special dragonite could have max lightning so if i get the turn correct then i mean that sounds amazing but if not still not the end of the world uh guard chomp especially now with dragonite and Feromosa revealed it's not like Garchomp has a clear winning matchup against either. And he goes for the max air screen. And it doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, as you see, uh, it is... Uh, he doesn't reveal an item like Life Orb or anything. But he doesn't have... Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna just gonna switch out and actually bring up my Toxapex here again because there's no way he just goes for the Max Lightning against the Garchomp and he goes for the Warm Wind which is fair and that does way over half so I'm thinking that is either a crit or that is a special Dragonite that's not a crit so that means that I want to bring out my uh, Toxapex out of the field again so I can preserve it uh, if he goes for Thunderbolt, uh, as opposed to Max Lightning, that is going to be doing significantly less. I can just recover stall that, but if I take the Max Lightning here, then yeah, he does have it. And if I took that, then Toxapex went down, and that could have made this match really uh, awkward, to say the least, you know. So, I'm glad that I scouted for that. And that means that I can just kind of go back out into Toxapex, to be perfectly honest. And Toxapex clicking recover should win the game. So yeah. So he brought a lot of ways to check the guard jump, but this left him very weak to Toxapex. So yeah, he has Surf, Max Lightning. Uh, Surf basically confirms that he is special. Uh, because after, after all, he did go for only max moves, which don't reveal that whether you're physical or special. Uh, and I'm just going to click recover. So yeah, this that is a pretty interesting thing to note about uh, mixed attackers. Uh, things like Tyranitar or Dragonite, they have, or even Salamence, they have good uh, mixed offensive stat spreads. And what that enables them to do is go for like kind of a lead Dynamax. And it is un it leaves your opponent unsure if it's actually physical or special. Uh, and it might kind of be too late once they figure that out. Yeah, another common uh, mixed attacker, uh, not mixed attacker, but uh, either physical or special, but you don't know until it's too late type of Pokemon is Seismitoad. Seismitoad is really good. It's another way to for you, uh, a lot of teams to check Zapdos and Cinderace offensively, uh, which is a common theme here. So yeah, I'm, game is pretty much over for now. I'm just going to go for Max Geyser and take out the Feromosa. So I don't want to get a uh, Drill Run crit and lose the game. So I'm just trying to minimize my uh, risk here, and unless and if if he goes for the U-turn, then I mean I'm it, I'm still getting a lot of damage on the Dragonite. Uh, so yeah, he goes for the Ice move. I guess he was trying to catch me uh, going for some kind of over predict, as I have been kind of. Uh, playing very risky with the Garchomp to be perfectly honest but that was only because I was able to kind of throw it out because Garchomp was not um, uh, 
so crucial to my game plan as Toxapex was. So yeah, he brings out Dragonite. And here, I'm just gonna uh, switch out to Guard Jump again. Uh, if he goes for the uh, Thunderbolt, then that that is... I get to stunt on him. And if not, if he KOs, then I just go into my Zapdos and Hurricane and finish off the game. Yeah, so this... I didn't need to do that, but this made sure that the game ended as quickly as possible. Uh, which is good, because I mean, I, I do want uh, shorter videos for everyone to watch. Uh, well, not shorter videos. I could make shorter videos by just not recording as many games, but that wouldn't be good for anyone. I, want, I don't want the games to drag out long. It was, I guess, closer to what I meant. So yeah, third game, I'm going to be using the Mimikyu variant of the team. And I am gonna bring Garchomp. Uh, Urshifu looks really good here. And Garchomp is good. And on as my third Pokemon, I'm gonna be using Mimikyu. Should be able to check the Urshifu, check the Zapdos. Uh, conditionally, so I, whichever of Zapdos... No, not Zapdos. Mimikyu or Garchomp Dynamax. I should be able to chuck Zapdos either way. And yeah, so let's see what his my opponent brings. He does have a few unconventional picks. Uh, Rotom Frost could be really threatening because uh, of what I brought. If it's a Scarf Rotom Frost, I mean that is danger. Uh, it is. Chuck defensively pretty well by whatever I have, but at the same time, I am uh, not able to switch into it at all. So here, I'm just gonna go for the Surging Strikes. This is not actually a very good matchup, but there's no way he just... You have to be have, have Balls of Steel to just Airstream right away, or... Because so many Urshifu are Sashed or Scarfed. So he goes for the U-turn. I think that is a very wise play that should cover a lot more than just Dynamaxing turn 1. Uh, and he does reveal that I am not Scarf. Uh, and yeah, that this breaks my potential Sash, which is probably what he was thinking. But unfortunately for him, I kind of uh, pulled off a Gambit and it definitely pays off as my Bandit Surgeon Strikes is gonna do way too much to Rotom. Yep, that is a one-hit KO. And my opponent, I know for a fact that he is uh, punching himself right now because he could have just uh, gone for uh, another attack, uh, like a Dynamax max move onto my Urshifu and just knock me out. But a bit too late for that, uh, I am going to be able to get the KO. And here, I'm just going to sack the Mimikyu. I just want to uh, get Garchomp in safely. And on top of that, I also want to preserve my Urshifu for the offensive matchup. Uh, so this covers a lot of cases here. If he were to go for a raw high jump kick, trying to preserve his Dynamax, then he would just attack into the Mimikyu and lose half health. That is great for me. And if that doesn't happen, he might just go for the max airstream, as he does here. And that means that I'm able to use Mimikyu to stall out two turns of Dynamax. And that means that Garchomp has a much easier time uh, beating the Cinderace 1v1. Because Garchomp, you can't just jam in Garchomp to check things like Cinderace or Zapdos, you need, need a little more finesse. And that finesse often involves either like getting it in through like Volt Switch U-turn type of situations, getting it after, in after a sack or in a double down situation. So make sure that uh, Garchomp is able to get the full value out of Dynamax. If it switches in to a strong attack like a uh, Max Airstream, that's Garchomp has the bulk to actually survive that, which is kind of crazy, but that means that it can't do anything afterwards. 
So that is not what you want to do with Garchomp. You definitely want to take advantage of its bulk. Uh, bring it in, give it uh, free switches like this, and now Garchomp is able to 1v1 the Cinderace. So I think about uh, going for the max guard here for a bit. I, I don't think it really matters. Uh, my, if I, the thing with max guard is, if I go for the max guard, that means that he's going to be able to go for the max bounce, uh, not max bounce, just bounce and stall out three turns of my Dynamax. Uh, if I go for max, uh, Drake, I mean, pretty much the similar thing happens if I miss out on the KO. So I would say, uh, going for the max guard is slightly better in terms of, preserving HP on the Garchomp, but I think it's that's not the most important thing here. I definitely just want to attack in case my opponent tries to get cute with Cinderace and tries to preserve it. Because if he gets some damage on this uh, Garchomp and my Dynamax runs out, my Urshifu is in range of high jump kick. And Garchomp, after a bit of chip, could be in range of high jump kick as well. So, I just wanted to go for the attacks, uh, put offensive pressure on my opponent so he doesn't have the ability to kind of switch around, pivot around, and stall out my, my Garchomp Dynamax that way. But, he, my opponent reveals Excadrill, uh, Mold Breaker Excadrill, as his last. And that means that he really wasn't able to play around the guard jump too much anyways. But yeah, guard jump is gonna clean up after uh, the their Dynamax runs out. Uh, I was able to let them Dynamax first and use my guard jump to clean up the game. So yeah, that's it for this episode. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, bye.